Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today we're excited to bring you the full length feature review for the MSI GT73 VR. So this particular model from MSI is going to be the 17 inch size. This is going to be one of the flagship models targeted for very high end performance. Now the GT series is definitely known for being one of those high end gaming laptops that MSI produces. The styling and nuances definitely say gamer laptop, but it doesn't mean that's what you have to get it for. The GT laptops can be used for anything else you would like. Really good for things like photo and video editing. If you're doing AutoCAD work, those require powerful CPUs. You can definitely do that here, but you can't necessarily grab a cheaper off the store shelf laptop and expect it to do great with gaming. So if you want to have the gaming performance, then this is definitely something worth checking out. Now, as we move through the review, we have many different things to cover, but we have to start with the basics, and that's going to be getting everything out of the box. This is a great way to show you what you can expect when you get your own laptop. We've got the outside decorative box, and inside we have the small cardboard box with some little promo material. So let's go ahead and fish through all of that different promo material, our warranty information, driver's disk, get that aside. As we get to the back of this box, this is where we actually have our power adapter as well. This is a, a fairly large power adapter because this is a very high-end laptop featuring the NVIDIA GTX 1080 for the GPU. We'll get a close-up for you so you can see the power specifications. If you do the math here, we have about a 330 watt power supply. Four pin prong there. So this is definitely going to be a big power drain when you have it in the high performance mode. That's to be expected on a gaming laptop. So not exactly your high battery life all day performance type of laptop. And now we've got the laptop itself. Very well protected. You can see all of the big foam coverings on the outside so it can't get crushed or bumped around. And then we have the sleeve over it as well, so it won't get scratched up. So with all the coverings removed, here's your first glance at it. It is a very, very pretty laptop. It's got really great colors and stylization to it. We'll go ahead and flip over to get it on the scale next. Laptop itself, 9 pound and 1 ounce. So not too heavy, actually, considering the size and the hardware inside of this laptop. We'll go ahead and throw the power adapter on there as well so we can get our full travel weight. And our power adapter comes in at three pounds and one ounce. So a total of about 12 pounds of travel weight if you're carrying the laptop and the power adapter. All right, now for measurements, we have coins up here for a scale. You can see we have the wedge shape where the rear is a little bit higher than the front about two inches as far as the rear side and the front is a little bit closer to one and three quarter inches all right with our unboxing out of the way it's time to start getting into the laptop so the first thing to do is just open it up and see what we have you have the oversized cleaning cloth that is between the keyboard and the screen that could actually help protect it during shipping so it doesn't get any scratches on the screen, but of course, it's mostly there for you to keep so you can keep it clean. The very first thing to do before we go into the operating system, we're going to go into the system BIOS and let you see what kind of BIOS options we have. There are a couple of surprises in here worth mentioning. So for the most part, we'll let the BIOS kind of speak for itself as we go through. One terabyte for our mechanical mass storage device. You can see we have 128 gigabytes for our SSD. Lots of options in here. We have the Intel virtualization technology, which you'll need for virtual machines. We'll continue to go through all of our advanced options here. Now the next tab is going to be the one that's really interesting. We have an overclocking tab here where we can change a lot of the CPU options. 
This is something you would normally see in a high-end desktop motherboard, so it's very unusual to see this inside of a laptop BIOS. This lets you do full pre-OS overclocking, which means it's not dependent on software. And that means for those guys who like to run Linux and other unsupported operating systems, you don't have to worry about the manufacturer's software to do your overclocking. All right, so let's wrap up the BIOS and move now into our first benchmark, which is going to be our boot speed test. So a completely powered off cold boot system, we're going to see how long it takes to get fully booted into our Windows environment. And we're stopping the clock at about 12.25 seconds. All right, we're just getting started now with taking a look at the laptop in detail. You can see how great it looks now that we've got it powered on with all that lighting. The very first thing to see is the bottom right-hand corner. We have a sticker here that has a lot of the different features kind of in your face. 120 hertz refresh rate on that screen. We have the NVIDIA GTX 1080, Steel Series keyboard, Dyna Audio speakers, just tons of high-end stuff packed into this laptop. Some interesting design decisions that are worth noting. You'll see on the right-hand side we have some keys here. This is our power key, this is our fan management key. A lot of the uh, shortcut keys and function type keys are over on the right hand side instead of at the top where they normally are on most other laptops. Just kind of changes it up a little bit, makes this laptop stand out from the rest. Looks really nice the way they set it up. Now the rest of the keys are really great as well. We've got that low profile chiclet style keyboard layout with the multicolored RGB backlit keys that we can of course control all those colors in the software. So you can see we have the zones right now set up as red, green, and blue. But of course you can go in there and change those to any color you would like. So with our palm rest, touchpad, and keyboard area kind of covered, now the way we'll start spinning it around and taking a look at our interfaces on the side. Left side first, you can see we have four gold-plated 3.5 millimeter audio connections and three USB 3.0 ports. So we have a line in, a line out, a headphone, we have all of the different audio connections you can imagine. On the back end side we have two big exhaust vents, we have our power connection for charging the laptop, an HDMI output, the RJ45 port, the mini display port, and of course the Thunderbolt. With the lights off you can see the lighting does come through on those red strips on the side and the MSI logo. And we'll go ahead and zoom in here and let you take a closer look at those interfaces. You can see the red accents against the black just all over this laptop as far as how they designed it. That really makes it pop. They added a lot of detail to make this the flagship model as the one to get if you want the best of the best. And of course we've got one more side to go cover as far as our interfaces. That's going to be over here on the right hand side. We have the Kinningston lock port in the very back kind of hiding away. And then near the center we have the SD card reader and two more USB 3.0 ports. All right, and we're going to finish up the tour by closing down the lid and spinning around a few more times just to let you see it from every angle. Just take in all the details. And the last part of the product tour before we move into our software and benchmarks is just a little bit of in the dark view. It just looks really great with the touchpad illuminated and all the keys illuminated. And of course now we'll jump into our device manager. Alright, here it is, the full list of our hardware, but not all of the features. Go to the product page to check all the features out. You can see that we have the Intel Core i7-6820HK CPU both killer wireless and killer wired for our networking equipment the nvidia gtx 1080 for our video card just top of the line hardware across the board the screen is 1920 by 1080 with that 120 hertz refresh rate this is a matte type screen so it looks beautiful and it does not reflect all the light in your face making it easy to see no matter what your lighting environment
All right, so we're going to kick things over to the benchmark section now. we got plenty of benchmarks coming up. The very first one here is the crystal disk mark, so you can see how fast those SSDs can run. Those are very nice scores. All right, and we've already kicked off 3D mark, and we're doing two birds with one stone here. While 3D mark is running, we have our noise meter out. We're just picking up the noise measurements from the exhaust and other key areas of the laptop so you can see how much noise the cooling system is producing. The best way to use these numbers is just to check out some of the other reviews that we've done where we've done the same test and you can see if this laptop is relatively more quiet or more loud than other systems to get a good feel for how well the system is as far as noise. All right, so the first scores are in, and we've got a performance score of 18,439 on 3D Mark 11. Amazing scores for our laptop. Down below, we have the GPU-Z information on that NVIDIA GTX 1080. You can see the staggering 8 gigabytes of RAM that card has on it. And then over to our left, we have our temperature scores. So 76 degrees Celsius max on the CPU, and the video card got up to about 82 degrees Celsius max. Those are really great temperatures, especially considering that we're running such high-end hardware. All right, we've got another twofer for you. We've started the next benchmark, and while we're running that, we're also going to test our temperatures. So we have the infrared thermometer here, and what we're testing for is to see how hot the system is getting and where. Now the key things to look for are we want a lot of temperature near the exhaust because the system is getting rid of the heat if we see it there. And we want little temperatures near where you'd be interfacing to the laptop such as the palm rest area would be the most important. So we'll go ahead and swing around and we can see we do have higher temperatures near the exhaust which is exactly what we want to see. And the other areas are looking a lot cooler. The cooling system in this laptop is designed to handle the high-end hardware inside, so it's no surprise that we're seeing it working just like it's supposed to. All right, the last performance benchmark has finished up. We have Firestrike coming in at a score of 15,261. Again, our GPU-Z information down below just to verify our hardware. And we're gonna go double check our temperatures. So the CPU came in at 76 degrees Celsius max, just the same as our last run for 3D Mark 11. And also our GPU temperatures staying the same at 82 degrees Celsius. So everything is staying in check and our performance scores are absolutely great. All right, a quick check of the speaker levels.
you can see, the volume is loud and clear as to be expected from those Dyn Audio speakers. Okay, here we are at the bottom of our laptop. First of all, just a quick glance at the intake that's available for the system. Lots and lots of ventilation as needed to pull a lot of air in and keep everything cool. We have some badges here for the Dyn Audio speakers. It's a really great sound system built into this laptop. And of course, we're going to take it apart. So to take apart this laptop, we have screws in all of the corners you'll have to take out. And also a friendly reminder that this is a warranty voiding process. So if you take apart your laptop when it's brand new, you will void your warranty. That does not mean you can't upgrade your system because if you order it through us, we can actually cover any upgrade you would like and have it still covered under warranty. So in total, we have five screws to remove, which is not too bad, and they are of the same size, so you don't have to worry about getting those switched up. And then once you've done that, you can just pull the bottom panel right off. Look at the nice black heat pipes. It makes the inside look just as nice as the outside. We can see that we have our subwoofer speakers down here on the bottom. That helps give that bottom in sound that this laptop has. Usually the 17 inch laptops can afford a little bit more space for bigger and nicer speakers. Now as we just pan around a little bit and take a look at what we have inside, everything just looks really well laid out. You can see they put a lot of thought into the cooling. This is one of the largest cooling systems we've seen on any laptop. Just lots of copper here for the heat pipes and a really big fan system on both the left and right sides. This is one of the reasons why we can run such high-end hardware and not have it overheat. They put a lot of work into the cooling system. Over here between one of the cooling fans and some of the heat pipes is it kind of snuck in the killer wireless card there. So that's where you're going to get your wireless networking from. We do have the internal battery. We have one of the wire connectors going over the top of it. You can just unplug that if necessary to get the battery out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to remove some of these cooling elements and get underneath of them so you can see what is underneath. All right, so here we are, all the screws are removed. You can see this is a pretty advanced disassembly at this point. We do have different size screws of length and size, so you don't want to get those mixed up. In addition to just making sure you have the screws right, these are the cooling elements of the laptop. If you take them apart and you don't put them back together right, you could ruin how well the laptop performs by having it overheat, especially your thermal compound. Once you've broken the seal, you have to replace it and do so properly. Now we do have our CPU here on the right-hand side. We have the gigantic NVIDIA GTX 1080 next to it. Here's our M2 SATA slots. We have three of them and only one is occupied. So that does leave you some room to upgrade down the road if you want to add faster or more SSDs to the system. The last thing to note as far as the disassembly is the heart of the beast here, the NVIDIA GTX 1080 is on an MXM slot, so it is removable. That could come in handy if you ever needed to replace it or perhaps even upgrade it if there is a more powerful card available in the future. So with that, that pretty much brings our review to an end. The disassembly is the last piece of the puzzle. We do hope that everybody enjoyed the full length feature review of the MSI GT73 VR and that it was able to answer any questions you might have had about the system. Of course, if you're interested and you want more information, then go to our website gentechpc.com and go to the product page. There you can find the current pricing and availability and the full product specifications. Of course, if you have any additional questions, feel free to ask them here in our video in the comment section. We'll answer it for you and everybody else. But if you need any one-on-one -on -one personalized help, then feel free to reach out to us by phone or email. We'll always be happy to help you out. So we just want to remind everybody out there that once again, this was Gen Tech PC, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.